How are you doing today? This is Minister Peyton Moore from 66 Books of Truth Ministries, and I hope you all are having a great day. And God is ready to fill your home with miracles and blessings. God is ready to heal marriages. God is ready to heal relationships. God is ready to heal your body from any sickness and disease. God is ready to just bless you and, and, and bring together families and, and friendships. And God also is ready to take people out your life that's not beneficial for your life because sometimes we're trying to hold on to things that's not beneficial for us. It's kind of holding us down and hindering us or you from receiving the blessings that God has for you. Sometimes it's people. Sometimes it's your parents. Sometimes it's your children. Sometimes it's a friend or a wife or a husband. And, and, and sometimes it's just people and, and, and things that you're involved in that you just have to let go because it's hindering you because God want to put something nice and sweet into your life. Today we're going to be talking about prayer. Prayer. I was listening to 105.7 one day. I'm not quite sure. I believe it was Tony Evans. I'm 90% sure it was Tony Evans. And he was talking about praying. Too much talk and not enough praying. Too much talking and not enough praying. Too much gossiping and not enough praying. We got to get back to praying. Church, we got to get back to a revival. Because Satan is on the prowl. And with prayer, we have the power and the authority to step on him and crush him and destroy him. God gave us that power because he's trying to come kill, steal, and destroy your life, your marriage, your career, your job, your business. But what you need to do is ask God for his Holy Spirit and save you. So you can grasp these powers and have this authority with a secure mind and heart to know that you are protected by our Heavenly Father. So today we're going to be talking about prayer. And let's jump right into it. Ed Cole has some beautiful books, uh, Maximize Manhood, uh, Communication, Sex, and Money. Uh, treasures. It's a lot of books that he has wrote that I'm very interested in. And I'm going to be talking about prayer from, from one of his books. And it says that prayer is communication with God. Prayer is communication between you and God. God hears your prayer. He inclined his ear to hear what you got to say. But you just have to lift your hands up and you got to give him your heart and give him your mind and give him your soul and say, God, here I am. I'm praying to you. Prayer is not an attempt to convince God of your righteousness, but it's an opportunity for God to show you his righteousness. Prayer is not a vain exercise. It's, it's not a religious ritual that you just, just do. It is, it, it is something that God wants you to do genuinely, authentic. Prayer is dealing with the matters of heaven and hell and, and on the, based on the word of God. Prayer is an acknowledgement that you have the authority that Christ has. Submitting to the will of God, taking dominion over matters in the realm of the Holy Spirit, exercising faith in God's word and of the standards of God's word, receiving his counsel, subduing Satan, crushing him, and causing the kingdom of God to be established on earth as it is in heaven. That's what prayer is. Sometimes you just got to, I tell you what, not sometimes, I have a prayer closet in my, in my home. It's a sacred place, man, and I don't let in and everybody in there because it's a sacred place. It's for me and my wife and for those that's sincere. And you go in and God wants to hear, he wants to talk to you. But you have to go in with a clear mind. You got to go in with a spiritual mind. Prayer, a prayer closet is more important than the Oval Office in the White House. It has more influence than the United Nations, and it can accomplish anything. Prayer is powerful. But what men and women don't understand it is that Satan want to rip you off. Satan want to rip you off from prayer. 
He want to put things and decoys and all kind of things in your way to stop you from praying or going into that prayer closet. Satan laughs at Christians and when he can find things to deviate you from praying, things such as TV, the internet, gossiping, on the phone. He loved to put things in your way to stop you from praying. Satan has a way of doing things, but God say, let me show you something. I can show you how to defeat Satan. The same way that Jesus Christ defeated, defeated Satan for 40 days. Satan thought he had him. But Jesus Christ said, as it was written, that's why you got to have the word of God in you and prayer in you to defeat Satan, to crush him, to step on him. Don't let anyone or anything keep you from prayer. You say in the name of Jesus in public, you pray in public in the name of Jesus. What can they do to you? Because in the name of Jesus is powerful. When you enter your prayer closet, go in with a subtle mind, a spiritual mind, a clear mind. You can't take garbage in there with you. When you go in that prayer closet, you say, okay, God, I'm giving this to you. I'm coming in with a clear mind. Whatever I have, I'm giving it to you because I need to hear from you. God is waiting on you. You have to be honest with God. Don't try to hide anything from him, your sins or anything that you've done, because God knows your feelings. He knows what you're dealing with. When you empty yourself, God can fill you with himself. He can fill you with him. After you talk with God and you get through praying, just go on, because things may not happen like a microwave oven. We have a lot of microwave Christians. They want things to happen right now. God said, I'm going to give it to you in due time when you're mature and ready for it. After you talk to him, leave it there, and you'll see things working out. But I want you to do the most important thing. You ask God to save you and give you his Holy Spirit and let him bless you with the gifts that he has for you. Because there are a lot of things that we're trying to keep together that God is saying, no, it's not going to work. I need to tear this apart. You need to separate yourself from that. Sometimes it's family. Sometimes it's, it's, it's husbands and wives. Sometimes it's your children that you need to separate yourself from because God is trying to bless you with a miracle and you're hindering yourself from the miracle because you're trying to hold on to something that's not working out. It could be a job. It could be a career. It could be a business that you started. That's, God said, no, 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 no. That, that's not the direction I want you to go. So let God do his work because he's inclining his ear. All you got to do is reach up for that. Reach up for him. People and things will let you down. God will never let you down. Take it all to him first before you take it to anybody else. Because everybody's not in your corner. Everybody's not for you. So today we're going to end in prayer. Dear Lord, I thank you for this beautiful day. I thank you for blessing me, dear Lord. I thank you for blessing me to deliver this word, dear Lord. I thank you for giving me strength, waking me up this morning, dear Lord, putting my feet on solid ground, dear Lord, to actually carry me and bless me and continue to bless me where I can bring knowledge to bring knowledge and give your word to those that want to receive it, dear Lord. I ask you just to bring healing to families, dear Lord. I ask you to bring healings to people's bodies with diseases, dear Lord, and cast out any evil spirit that's in their minds, dear Lord. I ask you to watch and bless over this country, touch the hearts of the leaders of this country, dear Lord. Bring us together in unity under your name, in the name of Jesus. Cover us up under your blood, dear Lord. Watch over our military, dear Lord. I ask you to watch over the people across seas that's working across seas all across this world, dear Lord. I ask you to watch over the world, dear Lord, because you created this world, dear Lord, and I know you know what to do, when to do, how to do it, dear Lord, because you have the power, you the creator. Dear Lord, I ask you just to watch over our children as they go to and from school, dear Lord. I ask you to watch over the principals and the teachers, dear Lord, and watch over our police force and military, dear Lord. 
Watch over them. Bless them. Give them a clear mind, dear Lord. Give them a clear heart, dear Lord. I ask you to break every evil spirit that's surrounding this world, that's surrounding this country, that's surrounding the states, that's surrounding the counties, that's surrounding the city, dear Lord, that's surrounding our homes. We're going to break every evil spirit that's in our churches, dear Lord, that's trying to destroy churches, dear Lord, because we are here for you, dear Lord. You're one God. There's one church and there's one faith. And dear Lord, we're praying to you. We're following you. And we're going to worship you in the name of Jesus as I pray. Amen. Y'all have a nice day and may God bless you.